thank you all for being brave. I was going to ask you, what would you do today if you were brave? But you already are. So our work is done here. And let's have some snacks. <laughs> but truly, what are you holding in your life? What is it that you are holding when, you, when we sang that? We went to, if I were brave and then I am brave. What is that leap? What is it that is present for you now in your heart, in your mind, in your life right now? Is there some kind of intention? Is there some opportunity or challenge before you? I invite you to just take a moment, close your eyes perhaps, drop into your heart and just see, what is my intention? What is it that I really want to bring forth right now in the world? Or what is it that's facing me now that I really want to, want to meet with, with great faith, with bravery? And then to come back to that chorus that you just sang, I am brave, I have faith, I am faith. This is happening. This is unfolding, whatever it is, that intention that you're holding. You know, the truth is we have all the faith we ever needed. We often talk about faith as if it's something that we lose and then find and lose and then find. And I guess in a way that's true, that, that there's a relative sense of that. But we always come in with the, the full load of faith, right? All these, all that we could ever could need. And it's just a matter of then tapping it. It's a matter of opening to it, unveiling it, that which is, is secreted from us, that we've hidden from ourselves, essentially. And so it's just an opening to it. So it's all there. It's not like a, it's not like I have to develop it because it's not there yet. It's like I have to unveil it. I have to unearth it. And really, isn't that true with the whole spiritual path? You know, when we talk about transformation, I've started to get a little bit away from that word because even though it's powerful, it's about getting back to who we are. It's, it's about authenticity. It's about the true self being unveiled. So really, it's usually a process of just letting go of the stuff that is covering up what is already here in truth. And the same is true with this power of faith. We have the power of faith to meet any challenge that comes our way. We have the power of faith to co-create any opportunity or make any seemingly impossible thing possible through the power of our faith. It's, a, it's something that we partner with other powers to co-create, the power of understanding, the power of imagination, for example, that help us then force together those two powers to, to allow the fullness of our faith to be known. So as uh, you may know, faith is one of the 12 powers that were identified in Unity's early teachings. Actually, it started way back, Emma Curtis Hopkins, who was known as the teacher of teachers. She taught all the new thought folks who then went on to spawn different um, new thought denominations under the, the larger umbrella of new thought. Um, I guess you could call us different sects of the denomination of new thought. So unity being one of them, centers for spiritual living, divine science, for example, and so on. And so Emma Curtis Hopkins was Charles and Myrtle Fillmore's teacher, our co-founders in Unity. And she came up with this idea of the 12 jewels of mysticism. And then one of her students, Annie Ricks Millets, came up with the idea that those 12 jewels actually were associated with the 12 different disciples in the order in which they were called. And then uh, Charles Fillmore later wrote the book, The 12 Powers of Man, which has been since renamed just The 12 Powers. And in it, he located the 12 powers in different areas of the body. You probably know the Fillmores were, um, studied the Eastern religions quite a bit. That's why you can see that Eastern religious influence in our spiritual teachings. The idea of the divine within, the realized self, the, and the seven chakras, right? So the seven chakras are very much, uh, sim there's sim similarities with the 12 powers and the seven chakras and where Charles Fillmore found them located in the body through his meditative research. And so uh, faith, as I mentioned in the meditation, is in the middle of the head, so very close to the crown chakra and, and close to the third eye, which is the power of imagination, which we'll talk about in another Sunday. We're going to study the 12 powers through the whole summer. So this is our launch of our 12 power series. And, 
and then later, another Unity student came up with the idea that the 12 powers were associated with colors. So the color of faith is like a, a royal blue, like what I'm wearing today. And I see several people went to hug me. Barbara went to hug me and said, oh, you got the memo. And I said, yes, I did. <laughs> and you did too. <laughs> So this is a color you can work with too as you're becoming more and more aware and expanding this power, activating this power of faith to work with the royal blue color. So you might wanna you know, just bring royal blue objects that you have into your altar space or your prayer space or you might wanna do some painting or drawing in that color. Um, imagine that color in your meditation time, bring it in um, and you can imagine that light in the middle of your mind where faith has been located and, and just work with that as, as bringing in the blue into that, the royal blue into that. And just see how that, that opens, that activates and opens and bolsters and, and allows you to see a fuller expression of your faith in the world. So faith um, and the 12 powers are, um, you know, as you can see, there were several people involved uh, spiritual teachers that were really on the self-realization path that tapped into that this. Charles Fillmore wanted to always go further. I mean, that's the beauty of our founders and their, their essence, right? They always wanted to go as far as you could possibly go in a lifetime in tapping the ultimate powers, the ultimate self-realization. So the idea of the 12 powers is that as you activate each one and you lift up all together with all 12, there is, a, it, he places at the crown, the I am, the Christ consciousness or the divine consciousness, that there is a realization of, of the fullness of who we are through activating each of these powers. And many of them have sort of, um, partnerships with one another. So faith often partners with imagination or with understanding other, others that are located in the, in the um, head area. So, so then there's 12 powers and there's something to the word, to number 12. 12 in Hebrew numerology means spiritual completion. So there's a sense of wholeness and completion. And as you begin to think of 12, there are 12 of so many. In mundane life, you know, 12 is a dozen. There, there's, a, you know, 12 eggs and 12 signs of the zodiac and 12 months in the year and 12 inches of, in a foot. And then there's also, there's sort of more spiritual. There's 12 meridian lines in Chinese medicine and acupuncture, 12 primary meridian lines. And, and that means uh, meridians of chi or energy that flow through the body. So there's, and there's also biblically, there's the 12 fruits on the tree of life in Revelation. There's the 12 gates of New Jerusalem. So 12 does seem to have a, a kind of hold on us. There's, a, there's 12 step programs that many have gotten much out of, right? <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, somehow we love 12, you know, from the, from the very sacred to the very mundane to the very practical and everywhere in between, we have a kind of natural understanding of that as a sense of completion, a sense of fullness, a sense of wholeness. And so uh, Jesus also talked about the 12 disciples having 12 thrones. And so you can think of these, um, if you want, you can think of these power centers as, as in being enthroned, you know, so it's like, Faith is enthroned in the middle of the mind. Imagination is enthroned at the third eye. Love is enthroned back of the heart. It's divine love and so on. And we'll go through them as we go. So I want to want to spend a little more time, obviously, with faith today. So um, the, the disciple that is represented, and later, actually, Letty Hammock also added the 12 women of the chalice, 12 powerful uh, female figures of the Bible that are associated with the 12 powers. For faith, it's Elizabeth, who you remember was told that she was going to have a child very late in, in her years. So you can imagine that would take a little faith, right? To say, uh, excuse me, I'm what? <laughs> and to walk through that process. So Peter was the disciple who you can see, um, this is what I love about Peter being named faith, because you can see his evolution of faith. You know, he wasn't always, he didn't just come in, just, you know, okay, I got it. I figured it out. I'm totally aligned. I'm open. I'm activated in faith. I, you know, he, like the rest of us, uh, remembered and forgot, remembered and forgot. Step back on the path, step back off the path, you know. 
He doubted at times, but he was also one who would try things, you know, and he really believed in what Jesus was bringing. He believed in this kind of Christ consciousness, and he believed and wanted he t himself to realize it too. So there was kind of, you could see that desire and that longing as well. And so he, um, he you know, the, you remember the scene where he walks on water because Jesus is walking on water toward the disciples. They're all in this boat and, the, you know, the, the winds are, are wild and the boat is wild and, and the disciples are, are, you know, all in a tizzy. <laughs> and here comes Jesus, you know, cool as a cucumber walking across the water. <laughs> you know? And Peter sees him and he's like, you know, invites Peter out. And Peter's like, oh gosh, I want to, but, mm, you know, it's that feeling like, I want to, I think I can, I think I can, you know, like the little engine that could. And he steps out and he does, he walks on water a few steps. And then what happens is he looks down and he looks down and sees, what, what are my feet doing on top of the water? You know, it's like that, that kind of suddenly the impossible couldn't possibly be. And in his doubt, he sinks. And then what happens after he sinks? Charles Fillmore is really poetic here, the way he describes what happens. He says, Peter began to walk on the water in spiritual faith, but when he saw the effects of the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink. And then the I am. So Jesus' representation of the, the consciousness of the I am reaches out its hand and pulls him back up, right? And he gives his hand of spiritual power and the wind ceases and there is no longer any doubt of faith's ability to rise above negative consciousness. And so isn't that what happens on our journey? We're walking along, we're feeling good. It's like, I'm gonna manifest this. This is going great. Things are really rolling. And then suddenly we look down, we look into, we sink into a kind of negative con uh, consciousness, or we, we fall into a place of doubt or fear. And as soon as we get there, we sink. You know? As soon as we get to that place, we sink. I once um, did one of those crazy things where you walk across 1800 degree Fahrenheit coals, you know, the walk across fire. Some of you just raised your hand, you've done it too, yeah. Oh, several of you. Maybe we should do it here. <laughs> Not today. Okay, just not today. <laughs> if I were brave, what would I do today? <laughs> so one of the instructions was, when you walk across these coals, don't, after you walk, don't look at your feet. They don't be tempted to go home and be looking at your feet for the blisters, right? Yeah. And, um, and they said, if you look, you will get a blister. If you don't look, you won't get a blister. <laughs> so, um, so sure enough, it happened, you know. I did walk across the coals with all my friends and it was amazing to think that we could do that, you know. And I have to say, I didn't walk, like I didn't saunter. I like, <laughs> it was a pretty quick skip. <laughs> And I did go home and I couldn't resist and I looked at my feet and I did end up getting one blister. But considering my feet were flat on 1800 degree coals for many steps, I consider one blister all right, you know? So this is, yeah, this is our process though, isn't it? That I, I love that they told us that, don't look, because if you look, you'll get the blister. And it's the same thing, don't look, Peter, don't look down. Look at the Christ, look at the I am, look at the consciousness that you are, look at the divine, lift up your eyes, Jesus said, and you will see that the fields are already ripe for harvest. It's not like someday, and it's not like if only. If only I could get this or that or have that skill or have this money or that time or, you know, our zillion excuses for why it is we can't activate the full power of our faith and all of these powers so that we can be the realized I am that we came here to be. See, there's music, it's getting you going. <laughs> oh, it was a nice, if we're gonna play a ringtone, that was a good one for that moment, thank you. Whoever did that. It was, it was right on cue. <laughs> so, so it's in walking toward our goals, you know, whatever that is that maybe you caught wind of today, just in, this, in the few moments that we've worked with this idea of some kind of intention that's present today in your heart, 
in your mind, whether it be walking through a challenge to the, the bright light on the other side or, or walking forward in a great opportunity of, of greater realization for yourself, a greater sense of being or something you want to create on the earth in a substantial, you know, <coughs> physical way. Uh, perhaps you're wanting to launch something new in your career, or in your service, in your relationships, or bring forth a new relationship or a home. You know, God only knows in this room there are a zillion things that are in the heart of hearts desire that wants to be manifested, right? And so it is with the power of faith that we begin. So Peter is the disciple associated with faith, and he's the first one called for a reason. Because faith is that power that sort of undergirds all the rest. It's the foundation that says, I can. It's the foundation that says, I'm confident. It's the foundation that says, I know with a sense of knowing in my heart something that can't always be explained. It's not always, you know, it's not just a mental construct. Fillmore said, Charles Fillmore said that faith always precedes science. It's cast out before science. It has to, right? Because we have to be the dreamers and the believers and the ones that hold the possibility so that then science comes along and proves it so, right? What did we believe for years as a humanity? The earth is flat. The earth is flat. We all believe the earth is flat. And then, and then you know, somebody somewhere must have said, ah, you know, I have a sense the earth is round. And there was some faith, and then everybody probably thought that person was crazy, right? And, and then, but pretty soon some more people started to realize or feel and sense, oh no, there's, a, there's something here, there's a principle of gravity, there's a sense of possibility that we could all be kind of held here on, on this big, round, blue, beautiful planet. And, and so then, you know, science catches up and says, yes, indeed, it's true that the, the earth is round. So that's kind of the way we move in our evolution, that we activate it. Peter's um, trajectory is much like ours in that his name Simon, which is what his name was when he was just a common fisherman called to be a part of this ministry, called to follow his spiritual path in a new conscious way. His name meant, Simon meant hearing. It was kind of a, a listening, right? I'm listening to the voice of what I'm being called into. Anybody ever listen to that voice, that spiritual voice, that intuition, that call, that guidance? Did it turn out for you? Yeah, anybody not listen before? <laughs> How did that go for you? Right, <laughs> we all know, right? How it works, right? So until we, the, the old saying used to be when we get hit with a spiritual two by four, then we go, oh yeah, <laughs> this isn't working so well. Maybe I should listen to that guidance. And so it's, it's the listening initially to the call and that's what, what Simon did. And, and then as he evolved in the ministry and, and in his time with this spiritual master, this teacher, uh, Jesus then renamed him Peter, which is, comes from Petra, it means rock. So he, he grew into, he opened to and activated his faith in such a way that he was seen then as the faithful one. And, and so we too are kind of on that trajectory, aren't we? That, you know, it's, it's kind of like when you come into new teachings, maybe for those of you who came into unity later in life, there aren't too many of us that grew up in unity. And there may have been a time when, you know, you, you, you came at, to this place or to new teachings anyway, and, and there was a listening, there was a call, there was something that got you here. And then there was a sense of, of along that path or sort of these stepping stones to, to how we develop that faith, that, that there was both the listening, but then there was a movement toward, toward the belief. So the listen, you can't see really clearly on my screen. Oh, you can see it up here. Um, but then there was belief, right? So then there was a challenge maybe to your beliefs, but there was a sense of examining your beliefs. So, so maybe you grew up like I did in the Lutheran church where God was sort of this, this distant you know, figure, kind of a personified idea of the figure, at least of my childhood, and, and a definitely an outside of me kind of realm. And then coming into unity and learning, oh my gosh, the, this idea of this, the, the big self, the, the self with the big S, right? The idea that the divine is within us, that we are of this, that we are of that same essence. 
at first was like, oh, isn't that sort of blasphemy that we could be like these spiritual teachers? And then to come into the realization, now there's a resonance here though. So there's a, there's a process, right, as we examine our beliefs. But that's still a mental construct. We're still not yet quite at faith. We're, we're, we're getting there, we're, we're moving toward it, but it's still just a process of sort of unpacking beliefs and repacking new beliefs and, and finding where there is that, that real essence of resonance for us. And then there's trust. Trust is a, a kind of faith, again, um, but it's not still quite there. Trust is like um, the time I went rock climbing, and the only time I went rock climbing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And the instructor is down below, this is at Yosemite on Half Dome, and he says, put your foot up on that rock. And I was like, okay, now do you mean the pebble that is above my head? <laughs> I don't really see how that's going to be feasible, you know? So, and, and I remember my body just kind of trembling with the, you know, the idea of trying to put my foot up there and then trusting that my foot would get there and that my body could actually move with it. <laughs> And of course, you know, they've got you kind of down below with the cords and everything. So there's also trusting the, the equipment and trusting the belayer and trusting the whole process, right? So it's trust. There still wasn't faith. There was some trust involved there. Charles Fillmore says it this way. He says, trust is like a cheaper brand of faith. <laughs> <laughs> He says that merely trusting in spirit, you're not quite there yet. You gotta like pow, you, compare, or bring it in with the, the power of understanding. And with understanding, then we affirm the presence and the power of God until the very substance of spirit appears in consciousness. And this is faith. So he's really stretching us into what is this thing we call faith. It's not just a relative thing about what I believe or who I trust or how I trust or trusting even in spirit or God, but it's bigger and it's deeper than that. It's, it's proactive, it's active, it's a calling forth, it's a claiming, it's a knowing, it's an affirming, it's a, a praying on that kind of rock solid space. So you start maybe with that spark of faith that you have within you, that, that basic knowing, or maybe you, you would say, okay, well, I have a sense of knowing in my heart that there is something greater than you know, just what I can see physically in the world, that there is a greater energy, that there is an essence of, I might call it love or light or spirit, but there's, a, there's something there that seems to be an unseen power. Most of us in this room probably resonate with that. Not all necessarily, but, but probably a lot of people in this room do. And that's something that some of us feel so strongly in that we could say, you know, I've got a sense of knowing in my heart. Like I, that's something I'd really kind of, what, what the saying is, go to the wall for, you know? That's something I really, I, I would stand on strong and not waver from, is the idea that there is something greater than, than can be seen. There is a greater power. And so then it's applying then, when you feel that, when you can get a sense of that, those things that you believe that feel like they're, they're un, a little bit unprovable or not fully seen in the physical world, and you can stand in those places, then you've got it. You've got the essence of faith. And all we have to do then is to take that knowing and that feeling and step it out into whatever it is we're creating. Or take the experience of the times when you have felt really confident about something, something that you, you just, you know, you don't even think about, probably the kind of traits that your fr best friends would say about you, you know, oh, he is just it's like the kindest person, or, or she is just filled with compassion, or, or, you know, he's just a get her done guy, you know, just really, you know, and so you know this, these things about yourself, you know what your gifts are, you know, you know, and you don't think about those things because they come so naturally to you. And so where it is in your life where you're having maybe a little more challenge or a little more difficulty, then you take that feeling, that knowing of, oh yeah, when I'm in my compassion, I mean, that just flows for me. It's so easy for me to, to give and to be present. I don't even think about it. But boy, when I step over here into my finances, I'm thinking like, how do I do that same kind of giving and receiving that I can do so well when I'm hugging somebody or listening or providing a meal? You know, so it's, it's like, 
it's, it's harnessing the energy and the feeling and the power of that and bringing it forward. And that's faith, really. It's, it's, a, it's a foundation of, of the knowing that we know. You know, the knowing that we know without a doubt, the thing that comes so naturally to us. There, and there's always people we can look to that can inspire us. Um, you know, there's no shortage, right, of amazing souls in this, in our lifetimes and the lifetimes that come before. And so it's important, too, that we don't do the separation game. Oh, well, he or she did that, but it's just little old me, you know. But that we recognize that anything that can be done, these things I have done, greater things will you do, said a spiritual master one time. And so it is knowing this truth for ourselves as well. Is this one okay? Are we fully on? Oh, okay, good. I knew something happened. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, so it's just knowing that. And it reminds me of when uh, Roger Ebert, who was the, um, with the Chicago Sun-Times for a very long time as a film critic, and uh, he's still around, I believe. Is he still around, Roger Ebert? Yeah. Yes, no, we don't know. No, Tyler's saying absolutely not. Okay, I knew Gene Siskel did, but I wasn't sure about Roger Ebert. So anyway, he, he talks about um, Nelson Mandela and the, you know, the photographs of the prison where he was for the last 17 years of his, you know, over time, 30-year pr prison sentence. And you see this, you know, tiny little bed and these thin blankets. And, you know, that's the place, this tiny cell, that's where he was for 17 years. And he emerges from that kind of, I imagine, abuse, negativity, all kinds of stuff that was, was directed at him for all that time. And during that time, what he did to keep himself strong is he, one of the many things I'm sure he did, was he recited this poem every day, Invictus, that ends with, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. So in other words, anything that happens to me, outside of me, cannot hurt this. This divine consciousness, this I am, this faith that I am, cannot be rattled or shaken because I'm the master of my own faith. I'm the captain of my own soul. And that is the I am, the capital, the divine essence, the truth. Nelson Mandela knew something about that. He had to have known something about that to emerge from that kind of treatment and that kind of experience to be president of South Africa, right? Anything is possible. Who would have thought that could happen? Even when you hear that history, it's hard to imagine, isn't it? How can you do that? How can you go from being you know, believed to be less than as a human being to being the president who unites a country? Amazing things are meant to happen. Miracles are meant to happen. Every day is meant to be a living miracle. That's what we're here to witness. That's what we're here to embody. That's what we're here to be. And I don't think we can do it without activating that power of faith first, without really getting clear that we stand in a place of knowing what we know. I think of faith, I define faith as a knowing in my heart. So there's a sense of I can feel it, I resonate with it, I know it, I, I can't always explain it, I can't necessarily prove it, but it doesn't matter. You know, it kind of doesn't matter because I can stand on it, I can trust it, I can more than trust it, I have conviction and confidence. So when we can find those places in our lives, and I just really encourage you to do that, to begin to maybe journal about what do I have great conviction in? What do I really stand on? Where am I, where am I rock solid in my knowing? And, and build from there because then you can just translate that into the other areas of life where you're needing that boost, where you haven't yet come with those faithful eyes, where you haven't yet come with that open, faithful heart that can greet, greet that aspect of life so fully. So, faith. It is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen, we're told in Hebrews. The assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things unseen. So that is what we hold to. That is what we know in faith. 
So what would you do? Because you are brave. You sang it already before we started. You are filled with faith. And so what is it that you're holding? Bring that to mind once again. I invite you to bring that into your heart, into your mind, or maybe you didn't catch something earlier and something new will arise or something will arise. And just as you begin to connect with that, recognize that you've already listened. You've already moved through that step of faith. You've already listened because you know what it is. <laughs> and that a part of you already believes it's so. A part of you can already see it already done. A part of you can see yourself already moved through a challenge or already creating what it is that you imagine creating. And we gain trust then as we release, as we release any doubt or fear, as we let go of the limiting ideas that might come to trip us up. And we just say no to those. This has no power over me. I free myself from doubt. I free myself from worry. I release thoughts of suffering or doubts of what is possible. And as then more and more trust comes in, so too that we begin to claim now in fullness our faith, that I am emotionally and physically and mentally and spiritually fit to be the truth of who I've come to be. And in this particular area that you're holding, affirming that truth and claiming that truth. So use the location in the body, use the color, use the affirmations and the intentions, and notice when you get off course, when you get out of the groove of faith, that all you have to do is just a quick step back in, a quick step back into the truth, a, a remembrance of when you do feel confident, what it is that you do know without challenge or without doubt, and, and get, feel that, allow it to run through your body and your mind and your heart, and that then boosts us into, into this powerful place of faith that begins the activation of the whole system that begins the rising up of the whole consciousness that we are after. So whatever it is that you're holding and more is possible. Anything is possible. All kinds of miracles happen every day. We simply open to them. So let's know that truth, that anything is possible. Have a confidence about that and affirm it together. I am confident that anything is possible. Let's affirm that together. I am confident that anything is possible, and so it is. Thank you.